Um, Barb has Barb has a really neat down. I have right a now. really interesting project. We're not gonna make this whole thing today. Okay? It's not a hat. It's, it's totally hat. a hat. It was on her head when I came back from yeah, earlier. No, it's not a hat. It's it's like a little art art bowl. You can see it's kind of bowl shaped. It's been kicking around for a while. It's not as stiff as it used to be. No, it's not as stiff, yeah. It's kind of But you could stiffen it back up. Oh yeah, quite easily. Quite easily. So we are going to work small scale with this, so. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, you can tell the lovely people all about that, and I will, I will. I will get out of the way and off the chair. Hi, everybody, and welcome to... Oh, Leah's gone. I can actually... <sighs> Whew, there. Um, Tech Tuesday. Yes, and I have a wonderful, fun little technique to show you. Um, here's a couple of other little things I made. These are obviously leaves, because, hey, who doesn't like leaves? I ran across a technique... A few years ago, and I'm calling it needle lace, but there's it's like a free form machine embroidery. Now I know a lot of people have embroidery machines, and so you're familiar with the concept of the freestanding lace that you can do with your embroidery machine. But what if you don't have an embroidery machine, or you want to work in a much larger scale? or you just want to put your own ideas into something and you don't want to be limited by the the um, software that you buy for your embroidery machine well you can make anything you want very simply with thread and i'm actually i, I purposely i don't know how easy it is to see this one because it's gray um purposely made this one in gray because I'm thinking of using it on a quilt. The nice thing with this idea is, as you can see from the bowl, you can make things in three dimensions. You can have sculpture built out of this stuff and it's super, super easy. So all you need is a sewing machine in free motion mode, your choice of thread, and I like to use thread that's the same in the top and the bobbin because that way whatever you produce has the same color both sides and then you take a piece of wash away stabilizer now this is our aqua mesh I have one layer and I've just put it in a regular embroidery hoop just a good old wooden standard twist the little knob kind of embroidery hoop keep it fairly tight and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw whatever I want to make. I actually, the last time I worked on this, I forgot to wear them today. I made earrings. Uh, and I'm going to draw on right on my aqua mesh whatever I want to make today. Now I've got some green variegated thread in my machine because that's what I was using this morning. So I think I'm going to do another leaf. So I have a dry erase marker. Because it's going to wash away, it's likely not going to hopefully stain my um, thread. I would be careful, but we'll test and see. So, so I am just drawing. Can everybody see that? I just drew a very simple leaf. I think I'll add a couple of veins on my leaf. And then I can add lib as I go along. There we are. So there's my leaf. I'm going to start with that. All right. Now the trickiest part is going to be getting the edge of that hoop under your presser foot. This one just slides through nicely. There we are. Grab my green thread. And I'm going to, I'm going to start right there. I'm going to get my chair, pull that over. This is one of those projects that you want to have the good music on. You just want to relax. And I am going to see if I can get a decent little novel of bobbin thread up here. Excuse me, Blue. That's the camera's name. Grab that bobbin thread. There, so we have the bobbin thread up, we have the top thread up, we're in free motion, and so I am just going to get started 
Now all we're going to do is go back and forth and cover that line with thread. Now, if I just went back and forth when I washed away the aqua mesh, it could fall apart. So I want to thicken that line by making little circles on top of it. Now you can make this as wide, as thick a design as you want, or fairly narrow. You don't want to get too narrow. The key is you can't have any floating ends. And the nice thing about it is if you work on an area and then decide later you want to make it a different color, you want to thicken it a little, you can go back over what you've done and just build it up until you get to where you'd like it to be. I think this would be a great technique if you wanted to make little butterflies to put on things. So I'm just going to grab one of my little leaves here, my scissors, and show you. So there's the gray leaf that I did. The other nice thing about this project is if you have an oops and you have a thread that turns out to be in the wrong place and you don't like it, once it's been rinsed out and dried, you can easily trim up those edges to make them nice and clean. The other thing that I like about this is I'm working fairly small because this is the size of hoop that's going to fit in my machine. But I could, with this, just working in small sections, do a very large angel wing, say, if I was making a, uh, uh, a Christmas project and I wanted nice lace and angel wings that were a little bit three-dimensional to put on my project. So because the process is freehand, it kind of lends itself to these organic shapes like leaves or flowers, butterflies. But you could certainly do square things. You could do script and fill it in if you wanted to add something like that. I'm just using a uh, an open toe uh, free motion foot, but you could use any free motion foot that lets you see what you're doing. Because the um, the aqua mesh is a nice smooth surface, you don't have to worry too much about the foot catching on anything. So you could use the open one as I'm doing, you could use the little round darning foot. Um, needle, this is just a standard, I'm not sure what was in the machine, probably a 12. Um, I wouldn't use anything too large because you're going to tear across the aqua mesh. I'm working on one layer of aqua mesh, but you could certainly work on two layers um, just to give it a little bit more body. You could do something like this with a layer of aqua mesh and maybe a layer of organza so that when you washed away the aqua mesh, it would be stiff. You could trim the organza so you'd have almost a a ghostly gossamer kind of image behind your leaf. It's just such a fun little technique. The more you do it, the more things you can think of that, that you might want to make with it. And it's just not difficult at all. So 
I've pretty much got the outline of the leaf done. Now I can think everything is fairly well secured. It's not going to come apart when I rinse it out. I can think about putting some of the veining in the leaf like this. It doesn't have to be as thick. It's just threads stitched back and forth. So as I'm sewing, I'm thinking of things that I could do. Thinking far ahead. I mean, like really far ahead, unfortunately. Wouldn't it be fun to do a few little white ghosts for Halloween? And then once you are all done, you could maybe go over them with a little glow-in-the-dark thread. Hmm, that would be fun. You could do some snowflakes for Christmas with white thread. And then once it's built up and you're just about finished, thread in some nice glittery sparkly thread. Let's see, Mr. Leaf, what do you need? I am going to come down to this spot and I'm just going to put in a little extra veining here. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. slide that out from under the foot and there's our completed leaf that looks good I was just thinking as I stitched if we're talking about um, Christmas or Halloween or something the nice thing with the aqua mesh or the wash away stabilizers of course is once you've trimmed it and you rinse it under the water and when it's wet you could sprinkle glitter on it so much fun. I like so let's switch back. All done. Doesn't show up quite as well when I hold it up like that. So my next step, of course, is going to be take it out of the hoop. That. And then what I would do, well, easiest way to show you, do it like that, is I would just trim around the leaf like that. Take it to the sink, give it a little rinse under some running water, lay it on paper towels. I did, I did these guys this afternoon, so after lunch, they were resting on the paper towels for uh, two, three hours perhaps, and they're completely dry now. So um, they look really, really nice. If you want to make something three-dimensional, first of all, you have to try thinking in three dimensions. But let's say I wanted this leaf to have a curve to it. Obviously, when it's wet, and I could dampen it down now, lay it over something, maybe a, maybe a, an empty bottle or something like that, and give it a subtle curve so that when I then carry on and applique that onto my quilt or onto my shirt or onto my hat or onto my mask, oh, there's an idea. I think I'm going to make some of these and put them on masks. Hmm, that would be fun. Except my mask goes through the wash every day. So maybe that wouldn't work so well. Um, your, your project can have some three-dimensionality to it. All right, so who's going to give it a test? It's not hard. It's light. It's lacy. It's perfect for spring. We should all make just, I don't know, leaf earrings or something out of them. That's it. That's all I've got for today's Technique Tuesday. Everybody take care, stay calm, stay safe, stay kind, and we will see you next week. Bye, everybody.